As we jump into the basics of Server 2008 Backup and Recovery, we want to go over some of the basic questions and thought process and planning that we did with Server 2003. What are we going to back up? We're going to focus on data only and system state. We're not going to cover the more complex but powerful bare metal rec server recovery capabilities. You will see some notes in your documentation. What space is required to back up? That is something you need to plan and think about. You will be backing up daily. That's good news. Server 2008 is very efficient in backup storage. This is the best part of the backup system in Server 2008. Where to back up? Most of you are going to back up to external. Some of you may have more complex backup storage systems. When to test your backups and recovery? We'll, we'll talk about that and planning time to maintain your backups. Remember, if you do not maintain your backups, they are guaranteed to fail. Well, here we are with OCPS entering the 21st century, Server 2008 R2. What a thought. Let's go, uh, as we look at backup in this operating system, which is technically leaps and bounds advanced from Server 2003. You're just going to love this operating system. Let's uh, go into Server Manager and notice it's the icon right beside the Start button. We're going to launch Server Manager. That really replaces the computer management console that we did in the past. The dashboard type view of server manager is just fantastic. This thing is full of features and I wish I could spend more time in that, but I am focused on backup right now. First thing we're going to do is go to the features area of the snap-in in this console and we're going to go to add features. Most of you are not going to have backup installed. So you're going to have to go down to features Make sure that you check that uh, Windows Server Backup and the command line tools and install these features. By default, they're not installed. So you will not have backup until you first install that feature. So walk through the wizard, go to the next, get it installed, and go ahead and reboot the server. Your next step is to go to the configuration snap-in and you're going to go to local users and groups. This is very important. Remember, it is essential that the Teco group is added to backup operators. If you want a successful backup and you want the ability to restore properly, you must add your Teco group to the backup operators of every Server 2008 R2 that you are responsible for. Don't skip this step. Once you have done that, then we're going to go to Storage. And backup should the Server uh, 2008 R2 backup snap in will be seen under storage. This is a great uh, view. You have everything you need to do in backup here. You have a nice little dashboard showing you uh, previous events, how your backups are running. You can see that I had a failed backup July 6th. Previous one and the one today went fine. This is a great way of just glancing at the status of your backups. Over here is the latest successful backup. Here is the next backup. Let's take a look at the last piece where it says all backups. Notice that it, it tells me that I have total backups. I have 82 copies of total backups. When you go look at view details and you open it up, you can see that I've, I've been backing up for some time on this server. I was using a another location and that's why you'll see that in some cases my I have 82 copies here of complete backups that I've been backing up, yet down here at my disk usage on my disk that I'm presently using right now for my backups, I only have 61 copies. And the difference is because I was using another location to make backups at one point. So there is that difference between what's on the disk and how many backups I have actually scheduled. Down here is the information about the backups, I am backing up G, C, F, and other drives. It tells me all the volumes that I'm backing up. It tells me the target disk. I have designated an external drive as my target disk, and it backups every day at 4.30 a.m. That will vary depending on you. This gives me the disk name, the name of the disk that I'm backing up to. It gives me the capacity, 600. Uh, 675 gigs. 
I have used 529 gigs of that space. I have 61 backups on this. What's really nice is when I go to view, view details, I can see more information about my backup system. I see that the space used by backup items, the space used by backup copies. I see the number of copies. The latest available is 7.7. The oldest available is 427, so I can go back as far as April the 27th and recover a file. That's phenomenal. We've never had that ability unless you had some incredible storage on your server in your particular school. We've never had that ability. Three or four copies of backups was the most we could do. You can scroll through here and take a look at all the backups that you have. This is phenomenal because of the efficiency of Server 2008 you can get this kind of backup strategy. Notice in my recording, I'm on the second day, and notice that it's 7, 8, and you can see there is a backup going on right now. So there is a present backup going. I can see I'm on volume 4. 32% of that is backed up right now. Over here on the action section of the MMC snap-in is the option to go ahead and schedule your first backup. If you want to back up just one time, I just want to do a backup of a volume. I also have the recovery wizard here. One of the first things we're going to do is come into the actions pane and go to configure performance. And we're going to make sure that our server backup is set up for the faster backup performance. This is going to switch us to incremental backups. Every 14 days, you're going to have a full backup done automatically. So it's, it improves your backup speed significantly and your backup space is used more efficiently. So we're going to use the faster backup performance. So make sure you make this change before you start scheduling your backups. All the videos that I'm doing on Server 2008 Backup are actually being done or recorded on production servers. I do not have a server that I can start from scratch with a brand new backup, but I assure you that completing all of the videos and training, you will feel very comfortable in starting your very first backup. So although I will not go through the exact wizard that you will see by the time that you're done with all your video training, you should be very, very comfortable starting your very first backup. To begin exploring and understanding backup, I'm going to go to a server that we are presently on, BWP MSO 9, and I'm going to go to an existing schedule backup. You can see that I already have backups running. Uh, one has failed. So you can see the information in the dashboard that is telling me. You can see I have a dedicated disk. Here's the volume label for that disk that I'm using. The capacity, almost a little more than half a terabyte. I've used up a lot of that space and I presently have 29 full backups of this server on my backup external drive, which is phenomenal. In, in 2003, we were lucky to get two or three copies, maybe four. With Server 2008, it will be very easy for you to get 29, 30, 40 copies of full backups of your server on your external drive. So let me begin by walking you through some of the wizards and options, guiding you through the selections that you're to choose for your backups. So I'm going to begin by going to the action pane. I'm going to open up a previously scheduled backup and we'll walk through it and see a lot of the same things that you will have to make choices in your very first backup. I've clicked on the backup schedule in the action pane and notice it's launching the backup software. Notice as I launch the wizard, it gives me information about my current settings. It shows me that I've got the bare metal recovery option shows, system state. Remember, this is primarily your registry, system reserved, and there's many other items, and we'll take a look. I have no files excluded. You can exclude certain files. Uh, we're using the advanced option of VSS full backup, and I will go into that later in the documentation. I'm backing up every day at 9 p.m. So the server is completed with this backup before we start production 7 or 8 in the next morning. The destination volume is going to be dedicated and it is a lacy drive that we have on Firewire hanging off the server 
as an external. Notice my options to change. If I, I can modify any schedule backup that I set up, I can make changes to the backup time. I can change the items that I am backing up. Generally, you're going to back up a full server. And I can also back up where the backups are stored. I can add backup storage, which is something we'll talk about later. I can also st stop this schedule backup. It will release the backup storage disk, but the data is preserved. But it will stop the backup. So if you need to stop it, a schedule backup that's running every day, you can open up the, the schedule and choose the, the stop the backup, and it will release the disk and it will also stop the backup. So I'm going to choose Modify Backup and go Next. In your case, you're going to choose Full Server. This is the choice that you will choose in your new server backup schedule. I want all my server data, application system state, and it automatically looks at the server files, all the files on the server, and gives you an estimate. This is very nice because right away we know that our external drive needs to be 2.5 times larger than this value. So I see right now I'm at about half a gig, uh, I'm sorry, half a terabyte of server space. If my destination drive is too small, I will not have enough backup copies for my server. So for my capacity planning in this particular server, I would like to have a 2 terabyte external or a 4 terabyte external to adequately back up this server. Let's choose next. Here we choose the time of day. In the case of all the TSRs, you're going to typically choose once a day. That is going to be the option recommended by your, by your area administrators. The option of the time of day is up to you. My recommendation is right after school or sometime in the evening so that it has full time to back up and not be in a backup state or doing a backup when the, when the teachers and students arrive the next morning. Let's choose next. In this section of the wizard, we actually choose where our backups are stored. We are always going to use a dedicated disk for backups. This is recommended. It is the safest way to store backups. It allows the backup system to manage disk space. Let's talk about I'm going to move this aside so we can take a look at Server Manager. Notice in my Windows Server Backup Snap-in, I, I can see the destination disk that I have for this production server. It has already given it a volume label. It totally takes over this disk, and when you select your external for a destination, it's going to format it, give it a new volume label, give it a volume label based on the computer name, the, the year, and the date that you have uh, chosen the disk and it takes total control of that external hard drive a couple things you want to be aware of let me go to disk management one this is a good thing because it manages disk space as this disk this lacy drive becomes full with backups the backup system begins to overwrite the oldest copies you don't have to manage storage so this dedicated disk is a much better much faster method for backup. Let's say for example you have a 4 terabyte external and you're a high school where you always need extra space on your server and you don't need 4 terabytes for your backup. You've looked at your capacity, you've easily got 2.5 times more backup space than your server's existing files. You could go ahead and partition this external first and then give one of the partitions to backup. But once backup chooses a volume, then it's going to take it over totally, make it unavailable to anything else except to backup. You will not see it in my computer. It will not be given a drive letter. It safely protects those backups, and it automatically manages your backup storage. Now back to our wizard. If you, you can, in Server 2008 R2, you can back up to a volume that is not dedicated. Your backup performance goes down by almost 200%. So you lose backup performance. You can do that in, the, in a rare case, in an emergency case, you could possibly do that. But the recommended OCPS standard is you make a dedicated external for your backups. 
you can also back up to a shared network folder and I'll show you how to do that later in the case of an emergency let's say your two terabyte dies on you and you're waiting for another one to come in uh, I'll show you how to go ahead and set up a emergency backup using a shared network folder the next feature in this wizard allows me to keep my current backup destinations which I've already dedicated an external LACI for my backups I could add more backup destinations this is very nice in an emergency situ situation where let's say your external is full and you're only getting three caught three backups three full backups and you need to desperately add some more space you could actually add a second external and the backup system will manage both of those this is not where you want to be you could do it in an emergency emergency situation let's say you lost your current backup and you want to you've got a new four terabyte you just got in and you want to reassign a new one so you could tell backup I want to remove my current destination and I want to add this new four terabyte drive as my new one so this would be the choice that you would choose let's say for example we wanted to add new backup destinations just so you can see it we'll go next and here you would hook up your Lacey drive or hook up your my book or hook up your iomega drive you could then show all available disks and if it sees the disk it will show up here and you can check the box remember it will take over that drive make it only available to the backup so be careful about doing this this is some of the things that you can do in this case we're going to leave the current backup destination and it is said this is this is what I have this is what I have chosen this is my present destination it shows me the backup items the backup times do I have any files excluded that's an option don't worry about we'll talk a little bit in the documentation about the advanced options VSS full VSS copy what those mean for most of us in OCPS those are not critical the default is fine in the case of your server you would then choose finish and it would have a backup scheduled so let's do a quick review of your server backup you're gonna first go to configure performance settings you're gonna change it from the default to faster backup performance you're going to choose a full server backup you're going to set your backup for once a day usually in the evening or gen generally after school you're going to select a backup device that is dedicated to backups remember when you do that it's going to be it's not going to be seen in my computer or Explorer it is dedicated to backup a couple things that you also want to remember about this when you choose your destination volume it's going to put the server name the, the year and the date as the volume label you can go back into disk management and modify that and we like to add the type of backup device so here I am in the server and I'm in disk management in the server management console and I click up here and I go to properties and what I did was I simply added some additional information to that volume name this is nice because it helps anyone coming behind me or who doesn't understand exactly what I did to understand that it's the Lacey external it's the my book Western digital external it's the iomega external that is the device that I'm using as a dedicated backup device so you can simply add this information to the volume label say OK and it will save that information one last recommendation from Microsoft is that you take this volume label and you write it on the actual external drive take a label and write this information exactly as you see it on the external drive because that is the volume name that the restore wizard will want to see if you have to do a restore so it, it helps you identify the volume label so this is very important in the restore process and last just monitor the status of your drive you're gonna get status your last backup your next backup you're also gonna see the success or failure of your drives and we'll get into troubleshooting later but it gives you this great view of what's happening with your backups